Hello gamers, welcome to my review of the Rocket Burst Pro Air, a new mouse from Rocket from their Burst series of ambidextrous mice. The Cone Pro Air had been one of my most used gaming mice of last year and their Wired Burst Pro was a mouse that I really enjoyed, with it being affordable and high quality. For the wireless version I'll go through the shape, performance and more in review that will be quite simply perfect. First of all, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment in the box below because I told you to. So this mouse is 120mm long, 58mm wide and 38mm tall and it weighs 81 grams. I might as well address the main talking point for this mouse that others might have highlighted when it was announced. The weight. This is substantially heavier than the Wired Burst Pro and Core version which were both just 68 grams without the cable. The Rocket Cone Pro Air as another comparison weighs just 75 grams despite it also being the bigger mouse. So interestingly that it's gained weight over the other version despite being smaller. Where does this extra weight come from? It does have lights at the base of the shell which aren't on the cone air. Could it be that they have sacrificed weight for RGB? For the shape it is the same as the other Burst series, a neutral symmetrical design. It's focused to really be comfortable for all grip types. For my meaty palm grip it's alright. There is a slight lack of support on the right side which is what I mainly prefer, so sometimes my little pinky finger can hang a bit loose. The wrist of the mouse is really comfortable so I have no complaints anywhere else. For claw and fingertip grippers they should also be fine. There's pretty much nowhere on the mouse that applies too much pressure for my hand so it's comfortable for longer durations. The coating is a softest matte texture, it's similar to the previous Rocket mice again. When I used the Cone Air I did have a few issues with the coating being very sticky and getting dirty quickly. I don't really think that this mouse will have the same problem as on the Cone Air there was a lot of engravings that just gathered it and on the Burst Pro there seems to be a lot less of this. And also my hand doesn't really sit as tight onto the mouse. The switches for this mouse are using the Titan optical switch that features in most of the high end Rocket mice. They are rated for around about 80 million clicks. Now a lot of companies try to go their own way in making switches these days. These ones are optical switches as well so it picks up an actuation by using light instead of a mechanical response. This in theory should help reduce double clicking and also makes it in theory a lot faster. Now these are somewhat divisive though. These sound to me mushy and cheap. but they just sound it. It's strange because the sound in some cases is actually quite a bit bone chilling. When playing with headphones on it's fine you don't really notice it but when I take them off they are really noticeable. It's strange because there's nothing really wrong with them in terms of usability but it is just the sound. I guess maybe if I could describe these switches it feels like they're made out of tin foil if that makes any sense. When I go back to a mouse using KLGM 8.0s for example there is a noticeable difference in crispiness and it does feel like it is lacking in comparison. The other buttons around the mouse work very well, the side buttons are well placed, they are large so easy to hit and also to hit the correct one. They feel very high quality also so yeah, they are very good. The scroll wheel here is also excellent, the notches are great, the mouse 3 click is fine, probably one of the best scroll wheels I've used recently. I play a lot of Dota 2 and use the mouse 3 click to move around with my camera so it definitely gets used and it's superb and I absolutely love this scroll wheel. Under the scroll wheel you have your DPI button and on the underside of the mouse you have your 2.4 GHz wireless off and Bluetooth switch along with a pairing button. You also get a little slot for the USB dongle. For the dirt check, previous models of their mice have gotten dirty but for this one it's not as bad. As mentioned the Cone Pro Air did get quite dirty because of all the engravings. As I said here earlier the engravings on here aren't really as prominent and the gaps in the shell are also a little bit bigger so it should be a lot easier to get a brush inside and scoop out any game gunk. For the feet you get some heat treated PTFE feet. It's very smooth across all the mouse pads I've used recently such as the Logitech G640, Endgame Gear MPC450 to name a few. It responds very well to various speeds of mouse pads so it is pretty much perfect mouse feet for me. The wireless performance for this mouse has also been great. This one doesn't come with a USB dongle adapter so it's plugged directly into my PC case and it hasn't had any issues with weak signals or anything. The mouse charges via the USB Type-C cable which isn't the best in terms of universal quality, especially on the Type-C port on the mouse it seems that a lot of my cables don't seem to fit into it which is a bit of a shame. The battery life Rocket says will last up to 100 hours but they don't specify on how that's reached. What is good is that you can use the rapid charging technology which will give you up to 5 hours of playtime after a 10 minutes charge. 
when having to play with the USB cable anyway because it's a light power corded one it is still fine and I haven't had any problems. The software for this is still using the Rockat Swarm. On their website they mentioned something about new software but it didn't download it for me so I don't really know what they're chatting about really. Anyway the software is the usual stuff it's filled with lots of features pretty well laid out without too much extra clutter. You can change lift off distance, DPI steps, angle snapping and all the usual and important stuff that's required of software if you choose to use it. The software isn't mandatory as the default and polling rate is also 1000Hz. If you want to use the software you can do and then you can just uninstall once you've made your changes. I had to add this in afterwards because I only noticed it when I was going through the software in more detail and actually going into the lights part but I just thought that this uh, description of AMO was very dramatic. It says AMO is a state-of-the-art intelligent lighting system that reacts organically to your behavior without the need for extensive configuration. It is enriched by the apps and devices you use, presented fluid, nature-inspired scenarios. What a load of bob. You can also change the lights as well. You know, the RGB is all right here. That's about the most you'll get out of me in terms of describing the RGB. But, now there is a big but, when I updated the firmware on this mouse, it has since refused to connect via 2.4GHz wireless. So it's now either Bluetooth or wired really. I've tried all sorts of things to fix it, but it just doesn't work anymore, so it's just a heavier version of the Burst Pro. Hooray. But wait, there is more. I did finally fix it. After a few discussions on Reddit, I was told that in the software you'll see two, yes, two versions of the Burst Pro Air and you have to recover the correct one. When I had plugged it in, only one appeared in the software. When I then unplugged the mouse, two then appeared in the software. So I then had to plug another mouse in to update the second version that appeared, which I guess might have been the dongle. Anyway, after recovering it, which took about 20 minutes, it works now, so brilliant. But it is a bit disappointing to see that I'm not the only one that had this issue. The sensor for this is using the Rockat Owlei Optical Sensor, which is a modified version of the Pixar 3370 sensor, which is featured in most high-level gaming mice. To keep this brief, the sensor is very good. You probably can't use the excuse of a bad sensor for missing your shots, unfortunately. In-game use has been great. The weight of 81 grams hasn't really bothered me at all. I've hardly felt like this mouse was too heavy whilst using it, and honestly, it's been pretty great. It's probably one of the better wireless mice that I've used recently. The cost of this is pretty decent as well, sitting at around about $100, 90 pounds or 99 euros, which sits a little higher than some of the offerings from the newer manufacturers, but it's still within that sort of range. As it is a bigger brand, they could have pushed the price up a bit more. Interestingly enough, it's cheaper than the Rockat Cohen Pro Air, despite being almost identical in terms of hardware. So overall, I can highly recommend this mouse. I guess the falling point could be the extra weight this thing is packing, but honestly, I think the extra weight, at least to me, isn't really noticeable, nor is it a deal breaker. Most of the mice I've been using recently have been at an average of around 70 grams, so the extra 11 isn't really a big issue for me. The other issue I can see as well is probably the main switches on this mouse. It is just an off-putting noise, really, that it's creating in a slightly lighter feel. I guess for those that are more particular about the details and feeling of switches, would again probably not like this. Regardless though, I've enjoyed using this mouse. It's high quality and it feels reliable. You also get a two-year warranty, which is pretty good for a mouse, and you know it should last a while. For the enthusiast that spends their days in aim trainers and can't play unless their mouse is exactly 50 grams and requires their mouse to be in a vacuum so there's no wind resistance when moving the mouse, they might poop on this mouse and say it's bad. But for those regular mouse enjoyers like me, we'll see that this is actually a good mouse with very few issues. So in that sense, I would say it's definitely worth picking up. So that's all for this review. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below and I will see you next time.